In this video we are going to talk about the PGA CEO just banned golf's biggest names for signing with LIV. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. In the golfing world, the blows keep coming from both sides, but it appears that the Saudi-backed dissident league is gaining the upper hand in the current events. Some of golf's top players have been barred from joining with Greg Norman's breakaway league and the LIV golf event, according to the PGA. The PGA's latest ban, which included 48 members, began with threats. The PGA, on the other hand, has finally responded with its iron fist. The majority of spectators, commentators, and players, in particular, believed that the members participating in the LIV golf event would not be banned. However, it appears that the PGA has had enough and has made a significant move by banning members. Greg Norman announced a few weeks ago that over 50 PGA players had already agreed to compete in the LIV golf effect and had signed contracts. He wasn't bluffing either, as it turned out. The PGA has formally banned all 48 members from participating in the event and for being a part of the Saudi back to read leak. The worrying issue for golf fans and the PGA is that among those 48 members are some well-known personalities. Phil Mickelson has been promoting the Norman-led Breakaway League, and his public backing is clear. So that wasn't exactly unexpected, but he isn't the only one who has been involved in the mess. Dustin Johnson and Matt Jones, two of golf's most successful players, are among those on the list, as are Sergio Garcia and a slew of others who had already resigned from the circuit following their choice to compete in the LIV golf event. Now, the PGA ban's ramifications have been exposed in an open letter by PGA Commissioner Jay Monahan, who believes that the player's decision is based on the league's financial element. The ban members can seek the same benefits considerations, chances, and platform from the PGA, according to the tour, but it's rude. It's encouraging to see the PGA cracking down and enforcing tight guidelines. Monaghan went on to say that any player who competes in future Saudi Golf League events will face the same punishment as the 48 members who have already been barred from playing on the PGA Tour. Players will be barred from participating in all aspects of the PGA Tour, including the Corn Ferry Tour, the PGA Tour Championships, the PGA Tour Canada, and the PGA Tour Latino America. The prohibition includes participation in the President's Cup, which is based on international teams and is determined by world rankings. Because the PGA does not oversee the majors, the USGA said that eligible golfers can compete in the US Open next week. To say the least, there have been some interesting developments. The removal of the breakaway golfers from the FedEx Cup rankings, which is certain to have a tremendous impact, appears to be the worst blow of all. But, for the time being, it appears that the players are unconcerned about all of that, because they'll be making millions playing in the LIV golf tournament next. As expected, the reaction to the ban has been ludicrous. The decision enraged players, with the Saudi-backed dissident league LIV Golf spearheading the assault, calling the PGA decision spiteful and divisive. It's a classic example of the pot calling the kettle black, and we can't get enough of it. On Twitter, others compared it to Israel's previous boycott of Russia due to human rights issues. Graham McDowell, the winner of the US Open, also slammed the PGA's decision, saying it was bad for the sport. Players, he says, are independent contractors who should not be bound to a specific association since it is unjust. That's one way of looking at it, at least. Sergio Garcia, on the other hand, chose a different tack, stating that he did not want to get involved in a legal struggle, so he resigned as a member of the PGA Tour before even joining the tour. He was sick up with the PAS shenanigans and had been openly complaining about them, so this isn't shocking either. Mickelson didn't explicitly respond to the ban, but he did add that the historic day was not particularly enjoyable, and that he enjoyed playing the first round, but refused to discuss the PGA Tour matter at the time. Rory McIlroy and Justin Thomas, on the other side, spoke out about how the ban was the right thing to do with Thomas saying he was happy and pointing out how Monaghan's message was obvious and everyone knew it was going to happen. McElroy feels Monaghan's decision is sound and legal, given that the band members broke the rules and would face consequences. What are your thoughts on the PGA following Norman's lead after the band commentators were claiming that the situation with the PGA was exactly what Norman would have wanted? Norman is the brains behind Saudi Arabia's anti-rebellion stance. 
We discussed how the LIV golf event will impact the golfing industry a few weeks ago. Well, there's no doubt about that, but he said that he wants a nobody to win the event because it will encourage the rest of the PGA members to join the Rebel League once they learn that anyone can make millions and easily beat those players. Norman's method is ingenious, and it demonstrates that they've given it a lot of thought. Saudi Arabia's state investment fund has put a lot of money into the LIV Golf League events, and now that a number of top-ranked golfers have already played the first few rounds, there's reason to assume others may follow suit. It's a foregone conclusion. Players are also independent contractors, according to Graham McDowell. The remainder of them believe the PGA will have a major problem on its hands if another group of players breaks away and joins the Saudi-backed tournament. In other news, the PGA's domination may be coming to an end. Poulter will file an appeal against the ban. That's for sure, we haven't heard the last of this saga. Many players had varying reactions to the PGA's decision as it was disclosed shortly after the LIV Golf Invitational Series began. Ian Poulter, an English professional golfer, has declared his willingness to challenge the ban, claiming that he did nothing wrong because he was one of the players who did not resign. The PGA was constant in its warnings and then followed through by doing what it said it would do. Poulter argues that having two tour cards isn't a bad thing because it allows gamers to play all around the world. He'll be taking the PGA to court, but he won't be the only one. A legal battle between the PGA and the LIV Golf Invitational has been brewing for some time, and there's reason to believe that the final decision will be made in court. The next step for LIV Golf is to secure broadcast deals. The LIV Golf has been dealing with a number of challenges, with broadcasting being one of them. They had announced their intention to broadcast the event on YouTube in order to reach a younger audience, and it was a reasonable answer to their lack of broadcasting partners. However, it appears that their broadcasting woes are now behind them, as it has been announced that they have signed arrangements with some of the world's largest broadcasting partners. DAZN Direct TV Leaky and Cena Sports are reportedly among the names, allowing them to broadcast the event in 150 countries around the world, including Canada, the United States, Japan, France, Italy, China, and all of Latin America. Well, LIV Golf offered its rights to Sky and BT Sports in the United Kingdom, but it appears that they were unable to reach an agreement. However, fans in the United Kingdom can always watch the action on YouTube, Facebook, or the official website of the event. The 48-player field completed the historic first day of the LIV Golf Invitational Series at the Centurion Golf Club Carl Schwartzel. While many casual golf fans may not be familiar with the names leading the pack, don't worry because the usual suspects weren't far behind. The 2011 Masters winner leads the pack after shooting five under par and taking a one-stroke lead over his countryman Penny to please. Even though they had many difficulties on the course, Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson dropped their scores to one under by the end of the round. Mickelson was the more consistent of the two, but they weren't the best scores of their three-person grouping as Scott Vincent led them in, finishing three under and tied for third. Prashala can watch my it set up perfectly for round two as the controversial tournament finally becomes a reality. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.